Chances are, if you're running Google Ads in 2024, there are dozens of structures that you're looking into every day, you're changing your account too frequently, and ultimately, you're overcomplicating the structure in your ad account that's actually hurting you from growing your account over time. So in today's video, I'm actually gonna break down the exact structures that we use based on the size of the business that we're working with. At The Moonlighters, we specifically work with one to $10 million brands, and we help them scale to 10 million and beyond. These are direct-to-consumer e-commerce brands. So I am literally going to provide you the structure if you are just starting Google today and all the way down to $50,000 or greater in monthly average Google ads spend. So the very first structure that we are going to be talking through is the base structure. The base structure is a single performance max campaign and a single branded search campaign. If you're spending anywhere from zero to $3,000 in monthly ad spend on Google ads, this structure is going to get you the most signals and the most bang for your buck. So if you're spending under $100 daily, just keep it as simple as a performance max campaign and a branded search campaign. The performance max campaign is meant to drive new customers to your site. It's meant to acquire new customers. Your branded search campaign is meant to protect. So the focus of the branded search campaign is literally just to make sure that your competitors are not showing up on your terms before you. For example, if you're Nike, you'll see in this feed, Nike dominates. However, if I type in something like BarkBox, you're gonna see in the feed, there's multiple other competitors showing up right alongside us. So we see the first listing is BarkBox. The second listing is Chewy, which is not a BarkBox marketplace. We have one, two, three additional BarkBox placements, a Bully Make placement, and another Chewy placement. We need to make sure that we're showing up in the first position and that our competitors don't have the opportunity to steal our customers from us. It is your responsibility to get them to purchase. What we don't wanna do is work so hard to get them to type in your brand name and then ultimately lose them at the last second. The next structure is the base structure alternate. Generally speaking, we start this at around $3,000. The big difference here is is, as you can see, we continue to keep our branded search campaign. However, we split performance max into a performance max top 20% and a performance max bottom 80%. These do occur in separate campaigns. So there's a rule out there called the Pareto rule or the Pareto principle. It's also commonly known as the 80-20 rule. And what this states is that 20% of your effort is responsible for 80% of your results and that the other 80% is only responsible for 20% of your results. So you could use this across any facet of your life, but we are specifically going to be applying this to Google ads. The reason that we apply this is because if you look at your products, I can almost guarantee you that if you have a large catalog of products, that 80% of your total revenue comes from only 20% of your products. The other reason that we do this is because now we can determine exactly how much to spend on each cohort. Let's just say you're spending $200 per day. Across this $200, a little bit has to go to branded search. That's going to be determined based on how big your brand is. What I would recommend is keep that branded search budget separate and just run to a target impression share. On the flip side, the performance max of top 20% versus top 80% can literally just split your budget based on how much you have. So if it was $100 a day, I would take 80% of that budget and I'd give it to the top 20 and I'd take the other remaining 20% and I'd give it to the top 80. How do you determine what products you're actually gonna put in the top 20 versus put in the top 80? There are two reports that you're going to wanna pull. So the very first report that you're gonna wanna pull, if you've been running Google Ads for a long period of time is you're going to want to take at least the last 90 days of data and then on the left hand side navigate to products google did just change the entire setup of how google is displayed so you might see something different but generally you need to get to your campaigns and your products make sure you have no filters on so everything here is completely blank and then hit this download button and download this as a google sheet the reason we're not going to do this in here is because we can't do any advanced filtering we actually can't break out the 80 20. once the sheet is done you're going to get a big sheet that kind of looks like this it's a little bit confusing but basically, it's going to break down every single product that you have the ability to activate on. What you want to do from here is highlight the top row and create a filter. Once you create that filter, navigate Z to A. That's going to give you how much you spent per product over the date range that you selected, which in this case, we're doing the last 90 days. Once you grab this date range, what I like to do is I like to actually look at dollar signs. So I switch up my formatting and then I'm just going to clean up a few things. I'm going to get rid of my currency code, get rid of issues, eligibility, title, image, and I'm just going to hide these columns. And furthermore, I'm even going to remove the cost per conversion that we have here and our number of clicks. What we're going to be doing here is determining which products are that top 20%. So how we would do this from this point forward is we would take everything 
that has at least $1 in spend. So in this case, we're gonna say greater than zero. And now we have a much smaller list that is heavily filtered down. We went from 2000 products to 317 products. Of the 317, we need to create a formula. What is 20% of 317. We're gonna Google, let's keep it simple. That means we are looking for our top 63 products. We are literally gonna take and resort by conversion value, number of products that have given us the most value, and we're gonna take the top 63. So what I'm looking for is a quick count down here, and I'm just going down to 63. These are the products that represent our top 20%. There are tons of ways to do this, but the most important rule here is that we are taking our top 20%, which is this 63, which I'll highlight right here. This is what we want to focus on now. Once we use these Shopify IDs, we're going to break them out into their own campaign. The second report that you're going to want to look at is in your Shopify. On the left-hand side, go to reports and go to your product report. So you're going to want to find the report sales by product. What we had here was March 27th to June 24th. And then we're going to take the same thing just to keep this apples to apples. And then what you're going to see here is your gross sales, your total total sales, all the important information broken out by product. We're going to take again, a breakdown of which products are driving the most amount of sales. What I would recommend here is you take this, you pull your top 20%, say it's something like 60 products and you add those to a list. So now after we pull these two reports, we are going to have a massive list of the 20% of products that drive 80% of the sales. And we're going to have a massive list of 80% of products that only drive 20% of the sales. That's going to put us at a major advantage while every everyone else is spending their money evenly across all products and letting Google determine where to spend and having to wait through an enormous learning phase, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, depending on how much you're spending, you could now shortcut this and ultimately spend your money where you're most likely to make money back. The next structure that I recommend, this is the new customer structure. If you are spending over 10 thousand dollars in ads and you have had trouble scaling your ads here is the setup for you the reason the setup is so important and the reason the setup is unique is because we are strictly focused on acquiring new customers first off on the branded search side, you're gonna to wanna to run your branded search campaign at a target impression share. You wanna run this target impression share at 99%. In your branded search campaign, go down to bidding, click on target impression share. So you're most likely gonna to have to change your bid strategy from a target ROAS or a max conversions to a target impression share. You want your ads to appear absolute top of the results page and the percentage of your impression share should be 95 to 99, never 100, ever, ever, ever. Your maximum CPC is going to change depending on how competitive your market is. Generally, if you don't care about overspending here a little bit, set it to something like four or five bucks. If you're a little bit more conservative and you only want cheap clicks associated to your brand, set it to one or $2. If you're not spending at all and you get flags like bid limited, then you might want to just bump this up a little bit. Don't overcomplicate this part, set it and just check it every single day. The second part, you are introducing a standard shopping campaign. Your standard shopping campaign is going to be set up with the most basic fundamental settings. You're going to set this at a target return on ad spend very high. If your normal campaigns are getting somewhere around a two or a 3X, set your standard shopping campaign at least 25% greater. The most important part of this new customer structure is again in Performance Max. Once you go into your Performance Max settings, the very first thing you're going to need to select is in the settings, customer acquisition. This will normally show as bid equally for new and existing customers. Click on this check mark here to optimize campaign for acquiring new customers. Don't just click save here because this will completely ruin this entire strategy. Strategy. What we need to do is click one more button to only bid for new customers. Once you do this, you are going to need to define your existing customer list. Once we complete that new customer acquisition setup, go down all the way to the bottom to your additional settings. Once you're there, you're gonna see brand exclusions. You're going to click here and you're going to add a new brand exclusion list. Within this brand exclusion list, you're just going to give it your website. I'm not joking, it is as simple as nike.com. Just drop it right in there. Once you do that, it's gonna scrape your website for all the valuable information that's specific to you that you have trademarked for, that you have registrations for, and it's going to completely exclude them for you. If you don't trust it, 
enter your branded terms manually. I have seen absolutely no difference in doing one way or the other and then hit save. So the philosophy behind this is actually just pure logic. What's happening here is we have the performance max campaign that is focused entirely on new customer acquisition. So we have to expect that return on ad spend to actually be quite low. We should be completely comfortable with this performance max campaign performing under our standard because it's just acquiring new customers and we're letting it run freely to acquire our new customers. The purpose of the standard shopping campaign is to continue to protect your brand terms. So we don't have the situation we saw earlier with BarkBox. We don't want multiple competitors showing up next to you. So our standard shopping campaign is going to protect your brand so that you can acquire customers a second and a third time. It's actually not new customer acquisition, it's just retention. So that standard shopping campaign is going to be a retention play and it's gonna work alongside the branded search campaign. Some people like to do this and they like to run just two side-by-side -side performance max campaigns. Let me tell you very quickly that if you run two performance max campaign one with a brand exclusion and a new customer only and the other allowing to run freely here's the problem that you have performance max is going to heavily favor those existing customers it's going to drill your existing customers over and over and over again every website they land on they're going to see your brand so what we do in this setup is we actually know how much is spending on shopping how much is spending on branded search and we constraint those signals with a target ROAS and a target impression share on the other hand the performance max setup that's actually allowed to run freely for new customers is just focused on new acquisition. So we have clear breakage in our account. If you're spending $10,000 or more and you're not struggling with new acquisition, it's time to introduce a non-branded search campaign. You could still apply the 80-20 rule to your performance max. Your branded search campaign is still gonna run on a target impression share. Your non-brand search campaign is going to have two differences in 2024. So Google ads and really all ad platforms change all the time. What we've noticed is that in 2024 and specifically in the second half of 2024, so far, what we have seen is that non-branded search, when you mix match types, you get better results. This means that you could have exact match, you could have phrase match, and most important is you could have broad match all in the exact same ad group. It doesn't matter. Basically, what we've seen, your exact match terms are going to drive the most efficient performance from you, but they're gonna get capped out really quickly. What we'd like to add after that is broad match. You could eliminate phrase match in these setups these days. Exact and broad is going to be sufficient enough for you to get over that hump to scale a non-branded search campaign. What you might see when you launch a non-branded search campaign Campaign, is you might see your performance max decline in performance just a little bit. That's completely fine. What's happening is a non-brand search campaign is taking priority over the performance max campaign. We don't mind that because the non-brand search campaign is going to be more specific and hit more relevant keywords at a cheaper price than the performance max campaign is. If you start with a setup and you're spending less than $10,000 per month, you are going to significantly hurt the amount of signals that your performance max campaigns have. I want you to focus not only on acquiring new customers, but acquiring as many signals as possible for Google ads. That's going to put you in the best position where the algorithm could work so much faster than you. We have to just make sure we're creating a setup that allows levers to be pulled, such as spend, such as which products are being shown, but we're still giving Google the free reign to work and learn. After you graduated from beyond $10,000, you're spending 20, you're spending 30. It's now time to get more and more advanced. The number one structure that we have seen for really 10,000 and beyond, once you get to this point, all of these are additive to one another. This number one structure just combines the principles that we have from the first four. This is the structure that we have seen scale accounts the most. No matter who you are, at some point, your brand is going to hit a cap where new customers are going to be harder to acquire and you're going to have to make the performance max campaigns new customers only. Here is the number one structure. First, your PMAX campaigns are broken out by the 80-20 rule, that Pareto rule. They're also all set to new customers only. We have the brand exclusions and we have new customer only bidding. Your standard shopping campaign is set to a very high target ROAS. We want to set this outsized at least 25% greater than your performance max campaigns. Your branded search campaign is set to a target impression share 95% or greater and your non-brand search campaign is mixing and matching match types. We have exact match, we have broad, and we're monitoring those keywords and search terms every single day. When you get to the structure, you have five campaigns running. That's a lot for Google to understand. If you're spending 10 or $20,000 or $30,000 a month, sometimes every quarter, every 60 days, even every 30 days, it's a good thing to just look, did I create more than I needed to? What I would just say, pull yourself back every 30 to 60 days. If you have way too many campaigns, cool it off. Come back to this number one structure. Or furthermore, if you are moving down in spend, then you need to pull back 
into different structures. If you're only spending four or $5,000, get rid of this. You do not need non-brand search. You do not need the standard shopping. You do not need the new customer acquisition. What you need to focus on is where you're at right now, not where you want to go. If you watch this whole video by now, you know that there are many complexities to this. If you want a professional to come in and manage your account for you and provide the best structure based on where you are right now with all these intricacies completely taken care of, then visit themoonlighters.com to apply to work with us today. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you got value out of this, please let me know in the comments below.